Ford V6 twin turbos, uh, 2018 Ford Edge. Installed a JLT uh, oil separator. Um, I think the company's actually changed names now. I think it's JNL now, oil separators. Um, so we're going to do a quick oil change. Millimeter, really straightforward. So we'll just go ahead and get those off real quick. Back side back here, there is a, uh, a piece that kind of sits down in a groove. So when you come up, you may have to reach back and kind of give us some assistance. It's on the rear passenger side. We're going to go ahead and pull this oil separator off and jump it out. And we'll check and see what's in it. The easiest thing I found to do this is just a cheap, simple strap wrench. Just because this oil separator does have an O-ring on it, it seems like over time, Figures out a way to tighten itself up, and obviously you don't want to be in the bracket that it mounts to or damage anything trying to hold it in place. Comes off pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, about a quarter full, something like that. Pretty dark oil in there. Now, on the oil separator, once I uh, dump out the old oil out of it, usually I just take like a blue shop rag, something that doesn't leave lint behind. Just give it a quick wipe. Super simple. And usually just maybe a full turn or so past hand tight. Oil filter is kind of a cartridge style. Sits back uh, really just kind of in front of the valve cover on the passenger side. Um, so this is the front of the engine accessory drivers right here. Okay, so this oil filter cartridge is an uh, inch and a 16, so it's a pretty good size socket. So what I do is I just adapt it down to a 3 inch wrench just to kind of fit things down in here. And it comes off fairly easy. Like I say, this is something you could definitely do, you know, driveway ramps, jack stands, whatever, whatever you got to work with. So when this comes up, I'm just kind of pulling back on these hoses, holding them in place, and you can ride up, and that's what it's going to look like. I just to keep things simple, um, I'm just going to use this drain pan. It's extendable, goes up and down for the lift. But this is something you can do, any drain pan, any kind of shallow bucket, whatever you may have around your garage, shop, whatever. So when you get this, there's going to be two O-rings on the cartridge. You're going to get an opaque O-rings. You're going to get the two replacement O-rings. And you're going to get the small one that actually goes on the stem piece that goes down to the motor. Super easy to change. Only takes a minute. These O-rings can come off with anything super simple. Screwdriver. Um, you know, you could even use like a uh, like a heavy paper clip, something like that. Just be creative. Um, and the ones that are coming off, if you've got new ones, don't even worry about it. You know, scuff them up or anything like that. So pretty straightforward. So the first one will just pop off and kind of roll over the top. And then it rolls underneath the lift like that. That's how that works. There's one. There's two. So these are super easy to go on. Slide over. The second one goes right behind it. And you make sure you go all the way down. Kind of hold this O-ring down the groove with my thumbs while I'm holding the uh, the stem that goes down in the engine here for the oil filter housing. And again, this is something you can use with a small screwdriver or anything. I just like this pick because it kind of holds things in place and then you can just kind of pull it over the top of this and don't be afraid to, you know, put a little bit of force behind it. This O-ring is stiff, but it's tough also. So you just pop it over and it'll go right on like that. Go. So pop your filter back on there. Slides up in there like that, seals up, you're good to go, it won't go anywhere. And uh, Danny, if you're out there, holler at me. So what you want to do is you want to kind of look down in there. I'll try to get a good photograph of it. The housing down on the engine side is aluminum. Down in there and you can see the hole where the stem and this O-ring go. So if you can look down in there and just kind of set this, you know, right over the top of that, it'll fall right into place. Once your threads get started, it'll pull itself on in. 
as you thread the housing down into the aluminum block, you'll kind of feel a little bit of resistance, just slightly. And it's just those O-rings sliding against the wall, filling up. Once it bottoms out, it just takes a little bit of pressure to get this thing bottomed out, you know, where it needs to be permanently until the next oil change. So don't, you know, go cranking on anything. It's just a plastic housing, so just be very careful. Oil pan is right here, and it's just kind of a plastic polymer material. Uh, it has a, a sheet metal heat shield here between the exhaust and the uh, drain plug is actually this yellow piece right here and it's kind of has these stops these ears up on the side of it so it's really easy to this drain plug and it will make a mess if you're not paying attention so just start turning it slowly and it will just it has some long really coarse threads on it and if you have to you could use like a, a small pair of pliers or something like that to get a hold of it but really and truly it should just come out by hand slowly back it out what i will do is just hold the plug against it for a while because for whatever reason it loves to shoot the oil out of here with a lot of pressure and it will go everywhere at this point you can just let it drain so while that drains i will uh show you here on the drain plug what i was talking about it has these these long deep threads on it and uh has no ring on it. The O-ring hasn't ever leaked on me, so I don't think it's anything to worry about at this point. Just, you know, it's one of those things you might want to be paying attention to. So when you put the when you put the drain plug back in, just give it a full turn and it'll kind of click into place. Once it clicks into place, just drop everything down, get it clean. You don't want oil slinging all over the exhaust. Good to let it back down and fill it back up with oil. Okay, so to top it off, we're just going to pull the fuel cap out for the last time. And it takes a small funnel to go down in this because there is a small little cross bar down here. It's just a plastic bar. I guess it's just to keep from debris or anything large from going down in there. But if you use a small funnel, you can just kind of go off to one side and let it rest there. So the book calls for 5.7 quarts of oil in this. So if you buy these, it's four quarts to a gallon. So when you, uh, you know, get four quarts in there, you can check it and see where you're at and go from there. Okay, so anyone that doesn't know, all the original equipment manufacturers usually label stuff that has to do with the engine oil in yellow. So your dipstick's going to be in yellow, like your plastic drain plug's going to be in yellow. Different indicators are normally yellow when it comes to engine oil, so it's easy to see. So dipstick is yellow, so we're going to check the oil. Okay, so once you get the oil level topped off, and we are just about at the top of the hash marks, just a little bit low, but it's definitely good to go ahead and start it. So we're going to start it, let it run a couple of minutes. After it runs a couple of minutes, then we're going to shut the engine off. Let it set a couple of minutes after that. Let all the oil drain back down. If it's low, we're going to make sure we top it off from there all the way up to the top of the full mark. So now that we've shut the engine off, we've let it set a couple of minutes. We can see that the oil is down at the bottom of the uh, hash marks here on the, the full line. So we're just going to top it right back off to get it back up to those full marks to finish this up. All right, so we've topped it off and we're at the very top of the hash mark there on the full line. And just to let you know, this is about what we have left in the bottom of that second gallon. So probably about a quart left or so, maybe a little over a quart. Anyway, um, I hope this helps you out. I hope this is some good detail. Um, if you have any questions, comments, just leave them down in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you. I do appreciate you watching. If you don't mind, hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. We'll have some more videos coming at you. I appreciate you watching. Okay, now that we're in the vehicle, we're going to start it up. We're going to let the electronics go through its normal cycle. All right, so we see the change engine oil soon. We're going to say OK. And if we go to the left, we're going to see display mode and all the information for the vehicle. We can go down to settings, go to the right, go to vehicle, oil life reset, go to the right. And then if we hold OK, you see the bar at the bottom, 100%, back to the left. We can go back up to our display and we are reset.